welcoming everybody into the latest edition of the USFL podcast interview series, bringing you personalities, players, coaches, you name it from around the league, some of the best names and talents that you'll get to see from the league itself going into the 2023 season, of course, now in the series, as we're bringing in another few, another signee that's brand new into the USFL, uh, plenty of accolades coming out of D2 for Nebraska Kearney. It is Corey Hullick for the Michigan Panthers, newly signed offensive guard under Jeff F Fisher's roster. Corey, first off, I give this to everyone that's newly signed. Congratulations, my friend. Welcome to the USFL. How are you feeling? How, how, how have things been since you uh, put the uh, ink to paper? Um, awesome, man. It's uh, It's been a long journey to finally sign a professional contract, and there's just been so many hoops to jump through. And you know, so many things pulled out from underneath me. So I've always told people I'm not going to celebrate until I finally sign something. So, you know, I, it was electronic signature, so it was a little different, but, uh, mm -hmm. man, once that thing was signed, it was very exciting. It was very relieving and just excited to be a part of a team again and get to go out there and do what we love, you know? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you're getting, I mean, you're getting to get into a professional setting here as well for yourself get that experience with even some guys that have maybe been to other leagues or have been through this ringer before. Um, and not, not to mention, you're going to go onto a roster that, you know, not only I think it has a chip on its shoulder from last year, but I mean, it's also guys that are, you, you get to be with some of the most experienced guys in football. Jeff, having Jeff Fisher as your head coach is still means it means something, you know, that name alone, it's presence. That's, a, that's incredible to have that. Oh, I think that is the biggest thing that people ask me about. Is there, they, they Google Michigan Panthers. The first thing that popped up was Jeff Fish. And they're like, Jeff Fish is your head coach. And I'm like, yeah, it is pretty cool. I think, yeah, I mean, I think he's been to what, two Super Bowls maybe or something? Mm. Like, like that's just cool in general. Like, how many people do you know who's coached in a Super Bowl? And, you know, honestly, it's just another place to develop um, beyond, beyond college and have someone like that to develop me and just continue to improve on my, O-line playing, honestly, just learn, learn things from him going forward. If I want to coach and go that route, you just learn so much from different people you meet like that. And it's just, it's cool. The high levels that he's been at, and it's going to be really fun this spring. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to touch on asking just kind of your interactions with the Panthers so far in a little bit. Um, what I really want to get into here, I do this with any player. I, it doesn't matter what show I'm on or what I'm doing. I love backstories. It's 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 one of the best things about th this level of football. Kind of the different skews and paths you take to get here. Um, I mean, you you as we've seen D two route, uh, Nebraska Carney, and I did get that right before show talking with you, of course. Um, plenty of accolades out there yourself. Uh, I know that you even had to deal with uh, some of the COVID extra year type of dis discussions. I mean, uh, how how. How do you discuss your experience of a D2 school? What is what is Nebraska Kearney in terms of the D2 landscape? Um, Nebraska Kearney, D2 landscape. So we play in the MIAA. It's, uh, it's the premier Division II conference of, of college football. We have, we have multiple draft picks every year. We just have, we have national championships every year. Um, it's just high-quality football at the Division II level. And uh, coming into Nebraska Kearney, I want to back up a little bit because it's just fun for me to say, but I came from an eight-man school. I, uh, so my recruiting process was a little bit different. I was very under, I was very underdeveloped. I was kind of just, I came into college about 6'4", about 250 pounds. Like I wasn't, Oh, okay. I got a lot of interest from big time schools. They just didn't pull the, pull the offer card kind of, they just, it was more of a preferred walk on stuff. And Nebraska Kearney did, they offered me a, very good scholarship where I got to walk away from college um, financially in great shape and no debt. And, but anyway, back to Nebraska Kearney. So when I went to UNK, um, they're about an hour away from where I grew up. So I, I knew the town, I knew the area, but coming here, we, uh, the year prior, they won zero games. My <laughs> true freshman year, they won one game. And so I finished and we finished 2021 as 10 and 10 and three and in the quarterfinals of the D2 playoffs. So talking about my college experience is just so humbling um, where we started and where we finished. And it meant so much. There were so many turns. There was injuries with me. There's there's turnover in the program. We got a new coach my second year. Oh, dang. Impacted my life so much. And 
he's he's honestly a big reason why I got signed with the USFL with his connection with Steve Kayser. And we can we can talk about that a little bit more later. But you know, it's just D two is a little bit different, honestly. But it's it's high level football still. We just had a safety transfer to Lane from here, so I mean, the level of football is there. The top level, I would say, the difference is you don't have the depth that you have. I'd say from D two to FCS, you don't have the depth, mm-hmm. and then from FCS to Power Five. Um, but it's quality football. I can tell you that. And it was, it meant so much to me to play there. And I love the town of Kearney. And there was opportunities with that COVID year to transfer and stuff. And I, I said, no, I said, we want to finish this thing out. And we did, we, we were right there to win a conference championship. We lost the game, but we made it to the playoffs and made it to the quarterfinals. And it was a heck of an experience, honestly. Yeah, no, I can completely respectable decision. I know that I'm not going to go too deep into it, but because it's college football, it's I can go into so many skews about discussions on that. And one of those, of course, being, you know, do you go it, the professional career versus the team mentality thing? It's a little different nowadays. I know D, D2 maybe doesn't get that as much as the D1 side, but yeah. that is something you, I think, discuss. And transfer portal, I mean, you brought it up yourself. That's that's a big hot top button topic as we're talking right now. Goodness me. Uh, crazy. say so much on that right now i will not though <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but i respect the decision here i mean you got to you still got at least to have a good showcase you got to go with the, the guys over in lincoln for your pro day there right yep so it would have been about a year ago after our season ended um had to find an agent uh then had to find a training facility uh i picked to train out in denver at lando performance and Paxton Lynch also trains there so a little connection oh, nice there. yeah so we got to work out a little bit together while he's out there training before last spring <clears throat> but um yeah gotta gotta go to pro day in Lincoln um the, the way you get into that as a d2 school because we don't host our own pro day uh you have to have scouts call the universe like NFL scouts call Nebraska in order to get in so that was that was a great experience to work out with a lot of those guys I knew a lot of those guys just growing up in the state of Nebraska with them and i mean it's just it was just awesome to know that nfl teams are calling to see me work out um but you know a year ago so i had an opportunity i got offered a usfl contract a year ago okay um last february it probably was but the deal was i wouldn't be able to do pro day so i kind of had to pick between go play in the usfl or do pro day so i picked pro day a year ago and i see I'm not going to say I have any regrets because that's just not a way to live, but, but just being a D2 player playing at a playing against better competition and film, it's, it's important with the USFL. I had that opportunity, but I mean, we're, we're back here in the same spot, so it's fine. Well, I think for you, you know, look, I, 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 I get that it, more opportunities than ever now exist in this space. You know, that I think that presented itself right there. You know, you can, just having to choose between a pro day or a pro contract, you know, but credit the pro day, you have NFL talent. If you have that chance to go to that roster, I completely understand because that's, that's the, to me, you know, it's, it's maybe not always as said out loud, but it's, it's the end goal. It's the, it's the top dog. You know, the USFL is a great base. Like I've said, we love watching it, but we all as fans and even as media covering it, we know guys want to get up there. If they can. Yeah. So I can understand. hundred percent. I mean, that's the, that's the goal as a little kid, you know, it's, uh, but you know, just putting the pads on again this spring is going to be so much fun, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. There's not a lot of guys that, you know, they get to play professional football that came from a town of 300 people and it's going to be fun. I'm excited. And yeah. I'm yeah. This excited. Is, I was, I was say this sounds like a I was gonna say three hundred people. That's a everybody knows everybody type of situation. I it is. I'm envisioning watch parties already out there. Yeah, there, it's a good support system. <laughs> it's gonna be good. So many new Panthers fans are gonna be joining the fray. Yeah, I need need them. Not although not to say they aren't already well followed on social. I di- I digress, but I'll take three hundred more fans yeah. possibly <laughs> under my belt. <laughs> no shoot, it should be good. For for you, you you hinted at this. I, I now got to know. So, how did you get connected with Steve Kayser? Because I, I you 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 said it already. I, I have to I have to get the T. What 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 is the connection between you and of course your your head coach out there with uh, Car- with Nebraska Carney? So my head coach, he just actually took a new job, but uh, 
at West Texas. So if he's listening to this, just got to give a little shout out. But um, anyway, Steve Kayser was with the Los Angeles Rams for a, a few years, I'd say, I think 10 plus maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but he scouted, he scouted us from the LA Rams. He had the Midwest. So he grew with a connection with my head coach, Josh Lynn. And when he left the Rams, I think it was probably a year ago at this time to go to the Panthers or just with the USFL in general, I think, or something. He, he reached out to Josh, <clears throat> sorry, coach Lynn and said, Hey, does, what's Corey thinking? Does he want to join our draft? We think he has a home here. And he called me, Steve Kayser called me and we talked the scenario out and obviously decided to go a different route. Um, but then fast forward to the end of your guys' season this past spring, he reached out again. He said, what are you thinking? And stuff like that. And I was just – that was right before uh, NFL fall camp. Mm -hmm. So I was still there. I was still talking to teams that way, uh, waiting for injuries. Thought we were going to sign with a couple teams there. Just kind of got pulled out. Kind of Things didn't work out, which is fine. So I let him know of that. And then fast forward kind of, you know, in the past month, month or so, um, uh, I had Coach Lynn reach out to him, say, hey, Corey's, Corey got invited to work out for the XFL. If you guys want to take a shot with him, uh, do it. And he did. He called me. Called me he called me the the night of the XFL draft and offered oh, me dang. a contract. And Yeah. And I think that connection, more than anything, helped me get here. Uh, Steve Kayser, I think, has a lot of respect for Coach Lynn and his word. And so – just having connections like that help so much, I think, and it did for me. Well, I think that it absolutely is helping you out. It is sometimes what who you know. It's not just in, you yeah. know, in, in especially in football. I, I think in sports alone, it, it and you of course can attest to that it feels like that's a lot of a lot of it's based connection wise to get into the opportunities or the the ways maybe you have a chance at doing something. Yeah. 100% it is and that's like I said earlier like just meeting Jeff Fisher and that staff like it's gonna get even more connections for my future after football and that's just so that's just so big for me mm -hmm. Love networking. Oh, besides talking with Steve how much uh, other interactions have you had so far with the staff I understand that training camps are March from what we've been gathering everyone I've talked to and kind of people hinting I know there's not I, I'm not aware of a concrete date yet unless you have something but um how much have you been talking on your side of things and what are, are you talking with guys on your own squad, like your own offensive linemen, maybe or other guys that are there already? What What's your scenario right now? I haven't talked much to the staff. I, I wouldn't expect to here for a while. I think just professional wise, that's just kind of what it is. You, you kind of do your own thing. Um, but I, I feel like here coming after the first of the year, we'll probably start talking playbooks and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I'm in a group chat with the whole offense for the Panthers and, they're they're uh they're the players union is in discussion with the league right now over stuff and so there's just updates along those lines um they said hopefully coming soon they're going to announce if it'll be eight cities or four hub cities or what they're going to do yet uh, okay so we're still waiting to hear that and just some there's still some negotiation going on there but yeah it's fun to be in that group message with a bunch of numbers i haven't saved and i don't know who's talking and but yeah, it, it's fun um, to get to hear from those guys. Finally, your teammates, and it'll be fun to finally meet those guys face to face and get to learn the playbook and everything. Oh, absolutely! I mean, just getting the camaraderie. I'll, I'll be honest. I I was formerly I only played up till high school, but I, that was I was offensive and defensive line at my own spot. Um, I think just getting to know that unit and getting accustomed with the guys on your on your line, you know, even if you're not even starting line, even if you're just on just part of that group in general, you yeah. know, that's a, the line, the lineman portion of this is a brotherhood. You're all on one goal, protect your specialty players and especially your quarterback. That is something that is very much some, something great to cherish being in that position that I think doesn't get talked about enough. And everyone expects you to be that bully if you need to, because he, the quarterback's your guy. Yeah, offensive line is a it's a different thing. It's a different position. Not everyone can play it. Um you have to play five as one and it's really hard sometimes. And that's why when you see teams win championships, they have the best offensive line and whatever they're playing. 
That's why the Bengals didn't win a Super Bowl, man. They didn't have a <laughs> yep. they didn't have the best of the line. And I mean, it goes to show it's it's a selfless job. It's a fun job, though. I'm gonna be honest, because you just how close you are with your teammates on the offense line, it's crazy. I would always say that your tightest group is probably your offense line. And if it's not, you're probably gonna be in trouble. Um Ooh. they keep the team together, they keep the team up, and when they're down and they humble you when you're too high. Um yeah, it's the best position, honestly. I'm gonna, a little biased, but it's the best right. position. Oh, I, I think it is too. And I'll be I'll be frank, you know, I think you could argue as a guard, you might have the best I know it's definitely has its comp. It definitely is its complexities with more of the poles, more of the type of motions you have, but you also get some of the most fun blocks yeah. as a person there. I, I cannot say enough getting to go around a corner and whack some dude is yeah. one of the most satisfying feelings as an offensive lineman in this game. Yeah. That, that in its own right is rewarding no matter what the circumstance. Yeah, until you fall on your face and then you're just waiting for film the next day and you're like, ah, yeah. here it comes. Well, that's the part I do. I'm happy I avoid. Look, I didn't have too many gaffes. I'll lay this out, though. I was a center. Yeah. Once a game, and especially my senior year, I would have a snap infraction. Yeah. Every game into the tape every single time. I would and you're like, oh, ready. here's the clip. Here it's coming. <laughs> yeah, no, I know that. Weird. I know that feeling. You have a, okay, I, Lyman to Lyman, you got a favorite uh, memory in terms of like just just creaming a guy, anything like that. There's got to be one that you're like, I I haven't let this one go to this day or something along that line. Yeah, and I will, everyone knows this too that knows me. I'll say this answer, but uh, we were playing. It was the COVID year, okay. So they canceled our season, but we got we were one of like ten Division two teams to just pl- like get granted to play and schedule our own game. Didn't meet. I mean, it, mean, it meant something, but it didn't mean something. But uh, we got to play a school from our state, Shattered State. They're about five, six hours away, but we usually don't get to play them. It was a big rivalry back in the day, and we got to play them during COVID year because we weren't playing conference games, whatever. So um, it was our first home game. <laughs> so the funny thing about this was we were we were only allowed to sell 25% of our stadium's capacity or whatever stadium packed we're just like 25 percent, huh so it was just it was a fun atmosphere but anyway <laughs> all right one of our first offensive plays so all week we were we run the triple option in college and we installed this i was playing right tackle and we installed this play where i gotta where i gotta literally pull to the corner i gotta i gotta pull out to the cornerback it was sure long run but it was like all week we've never shown this they're not going to see it like just go kill this dude and i literally i it's like the best block ever is offense line but i block i pancaked him 10 yards into our side our own side our own players so it was the greatest feeling in the world because all of your hype guys are right there just talking crap to the guy just pancaked and oh and they're just Sounds all like there. You blindside like did a blindside movie oh. on him it's literally it's the first play on my highlight film. It's the the greatest. If you ever get bored, just go go look at it real quick. It's the greatest feeling in the world. That's my next mission after I'm done recording with you today. Is to go check you'll you'll see out. the first play. You'll be like, oh my god, he he talked about it. Great, <laughs> it's a an image. I need to. I'll make sure that I'll make sure we uh, link that down here in the description. Right, you need it right now, right now. When I'm talking, just the end of that. Mm-hmm. No, get, getting the getting the feel like. Look, when you're you're a big guy, it doesn't matter. You you put the fear of God in someone that small, <laughs> that small. Was, if you're going around the corner or small. going to that second <laughs> level, because that's my favorite memory. In the, this was just with the middle linebacker, just kind of setting up, a, just not only getting the key block to break a touchdown, but also just basically going, nah, out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I love those moments, you know, because that's what you do. Either you attack it or you try and dodge it. But if you dodge it, you screw yourself because then. <laughs> I got the angle to then move you where I want you to go. Yeah. It's the best. It's so good. Like What's I said, who are you with? <laughs> right. What's your uh, training regimen looking like for you, man, my man? Uh, how do you space things out right now while you're waiting to get to training camp? Yeah. So I'm back here in, uh, in Kearney. Um, I have great strength coaches here. Um, Dalton Gleason and Shane stock. I know they'll be listening. So I had to say their name, All right. but um, yeah, I mean, they, 
I was with Lando Performance there, a very premier training facility, but it's just I'm not going to go back out there and train. But so I came back here and um, at the college, and they trained me for about two, two and a half hours a day. Um, it's honestly been great for me. They uh, Their science-based stuff that we have here, the new technology they have to measure speed on the bar, the force output you're putting out there. And it's a, it's a game changer for uh, training. And they've just been so beneficial to me to – get me get me to where I am now um, just with my body and stuff and I just feel the most ready I've ever been to play just being explosive like an offensive lineman we still got to hear a few more months before three months probably before we report or something so we still got some time but you know training it's been it's been a long year because I've just been training for a year now and since last January when I was out in Denver it's it's a grind it's a grind but I just I just had to remind myself what we're doing it for mm-hmm. and just keep going, man. It just had to keep going. It, it sucked. There was times where I didn't want to do it anymore because sometimes you just want to get out there. But finally I get to, and but yeah, training's been great. I'm ready to go. Well, you're talking about being just excited to get the pads back on. And I mean, is there any, like, uh, you feel like any, maybe you think you're gonna have a maybe mi- bit of maybe not nervousness, but I guess like, okay, let's get over this like hump of getting back out it's been an, a year contact wise. I mean, of course you're going to be in the trenches. You're expected to hit, but you know, a year plus and you know, you are training, but you don't get as much of the in game or in practice scenarios. I feel like that has at least something you need to just be like, I need to get this done this first session. And then I'll be all, all my mind mentally. will be all set back and we're ready to go. Um, I think probably the first two days of contact, I'll be a little rusty with a uh, technique and, just the speed when you don't see the game, when you don't see in play for a while, you kind of, it kind of happens fast. It'll slow down though. Um, no, I would say first, first few days, it'll be a little rusty, a little fast and I'll finally slow down, but no, I'm going into this. Just, just cut it loose, man. Uh, I don't know how many more opportunities I'll have to play this game. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to walk away with any regrets of me, not just laying it on the line, but yeah, definitely. I'll be a little rusty there at the start, but, it's football. It's like riding a bike, to be honest with you. Got to shoot your shot. You 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 answered my other question was about I think in terms of what you want to accomplish this year, or maybe you have something else you want we want to mention. I mean, obviously, getting to play professionally that has to be some that something is you can check off the box right there again. I mean, <clears throat> I want to play football until as long as my body can successfully play football. I don't want to walk away just broken and unable to live my life after, but. Definitely. Uh, the NFL is always the goal. Um, we've talked about it. I've talked about it with Steve Kayser. talked about it with my agent, my coaches. I mean, mm-hmm. get better film. I mean, I, it, hurt, it didn't hurt me to play D2. It's just they like to see you play against better competition. That's what I'm going to do. Sure. Go play against better competition, see where I stack up. Um, if I don't stack up, I don't stack up. But I think, I, I think I'm a good enough football player to be at the highest level. And uh, – I'm getting my shot here with the USFL. And like I said, I'm going to cut it loose. We're going to meet some cool dudes and we're going to, it's going to be fun. It's honestly going to be fun. I was watching it last spring. It looks like fun guys were having fun. It's a different outlet. And I think that's so important because there's so many, so many guys like me who are just on the edge yeah. of the NFL. And these leagues are just so important. I think and hopefully they both, hopefully they both thrive. Honestly, the XFL and the USFL because, I think it's so important for guys like me just to continue to play, have fun and have that in your life. Player players first and getting chances for opportunities. I'm exactly with you. This might be a USFL show, but as we've stated on ours and I will say it here anywhere. Um, yeah, I'm very much the same. I hope both stick around. I hope more opportunities open up because that's the deal. There's so many player that the player pools, you know, are larger than just what you saw with the drafts for both these leagues in the first place. There's tons of talent out there. And I think just someone wants to have that say like you, where it's going, give me that professional chance to show off my skill. That's all I ask for. Let me do that and see where I go from there. And that's what these things do right off the bat. Yeah. I mean, just at the end of the day, it's hard to walk away from something without knowing. I've always said that. Mm -hmm. Um, just i've been telling scouts for the nfl just give me a chance and you'll see if i but 
and I get this is my chance, you know. Um, it's good quality football. I'm telling you that right now. I've seen it. It's very good quality. I, how many guys were signed last year to NFL rosters is for training camp? Yeah, I mean, pushed over 53. I, it was yeah. I believe, upwards uh, 57 last time I had counted. Yeah, I mean, was, and that was as just before the season had kicked off. Yeah, and I wonder how many guys still got uh, workouts during the season just from playing in the USFL. Just It's going to create more opportunities. Um, and hopefully it just it continues to build, and I think it will. I think they're doing great things with Fox Sports. Hopefully we can get into hub for our own cities and start building those fan bases. I think that's the next important thing for them. And they understand that. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, it's a little, this is of course a little still rumored. Of course, I know there's lots of write-ups on this, but you're with the Panthers. There's tons of talk, possibly speculation zone on, as we go, call it on the show about Detroit. You ever been to Detroit? I have not been to Detroit, but I worked out. So when I was in Lando, I worked out with a kid from Ferris state and oh, he yep. played in Ferris. Yep. And so he's from Michigan. Right when I signed, he he messaged me. He's like, Michigan, let's go. I'm like, never been. <laughs> but we'll, sure. I'm sure it's just like Nebraska, cold in the spring, but we'll we'll figure it out. If anything, if you're an outdoorsman, plenty of places nearby. That's all yeah. I could give you. <laughs> love, love that state for, for any fishing, hiking. Perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. That's all I got. Well, Corey, want to say. Good luck to you in this season. I'm Many of us, of course, Panthers fans are going to be rooting for you. I will definitely be rooting for you, not only as a fan, of course, of this team, but just so I can also text you maybe for a new favorite memory out there on the field. Seriously, I, I love, you know, linemen, linemen need to get more love in terms of getting those pancakes or getting those massive hit, massive hits. It's starting to build on social. I've seen mm -hmm. around football circles more recent years. Just keep on going. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully sending you a text saying, damn, man, nice pull hey i am also hoping for you to send that to me that'd be great um but no appreciate it man um guys like you just building up this league that's awesome and oh, just you. having us having us players to have an opportunity to speak about our our profession and where we've come from and just to meet new people around the world like that it's it's awesome thanks for using that uh that platform no problem until next time Corey. we'll I think we'll chat again. I, I got a good feeling about this. Yeah, man. We can chat all you want. I'll come back on. That's fine. <laughs> good stuff. Well, folks, we'll, sounds like we'll catch Corey next time here on the show, man. We'll catch. See you. See you later, dude. Later.